Tom Clancy's The Division. In 2013 it looked a hell of a lot different as opposed to the release, with many features and mechanics not even making it into the game. Think of the stealth takedowns or the companion drone. Many things have been modified or removed, so let's take a look at all the things that The Division used to have. The first and most obvious thing that differs between the pre- and post-release versions of the game are the graphics. When taking a look at the gameplay footage from E3 2013, we can see an extremely detailed version of Brooklyn. Trash, shopping carts and other details everywhere, puzzles gave realistic reflections and the overall color grading was way different than at release. It was clear that Massive and Ubisoft had downgraded the game at release. Most likely because the 2013 version was way too ambitious, but it wasn't just the graphics that changed. The more interactive parts of the game are also different. Most of all, the HUD or heads-up display, menu system and map, all powered by the smartwatch. The HUD looked a bit different, perhaps a bit cleaner and more detailed in its design, but the overall layout is the same. It however lacks a minimap, which could have been on purpose for the demo of course. Upon activation, the smartwatch displays the menu around the player's arm in a holographic fashion, where you can scroll through the selections. When selecting the world map, there are a few changes noticeable. While the player in the release's version also stands in the middle of a projected map, the pre-release version seemed much cleaner and more detailed. Too bad this wasn't in the final version, because it immerses you quite a bit. And you probably can't imagine that Massive had implemented stealth to the game with this much bullet sponginess. It wasn't just stealth, but you could even do stun takedowns. It's unclear why Massive decided to remove this feature, but I think we can all figure out why. Pre-release Tom Clancy's The Division looked like a more polished game in terms of animations, interactable items and features. The E3 2013 gameplay trailer was the most idealistic and in 2014 and 2015 it became decreasingly less idealistic. Probably because it was too much to pull off. The first feature seen is the automatic scanning of environment and NPCs around the player. Here we can see Isaac scanning a possibly infected citizen and later on he scans a police officer with a head trauma near the police station. Although in the final game these scans were there, they were definitely less interesting. A little further in that same gameplay trailer we see an allied agent shooting the locks of a cell to free the police officers. Not that much later, the agent picks up a water bottle and while we know this, the animation is way better done right here. In that same corridor we see a map with some relevant information on it. By interacting with it, the agent added the information and locations from that map to the one on his smartwatch, a feature that was lacking in the final game. The final feature that turned out a little different was picking up high value weapons. In the weapons magazine in the police department, the agent picks up an MK-17. The animation with him opening the box and picking it up immerses so much more than the way they finally chose to do it. And these are all details that I can imagine that take a crazy amount of time to make. So I kind of feel why they didn't implement all of this in the vinyl release. Still, seeing that it's possible makes me wish that the Division 1 would have turned out like this. If we're going back to the menu, the agent is seen selecting the skills. While many skills in one form or another made it into the game, there's quite a lot that didn't. Skills that were added in the release version were the Pulse, Turret Seeker Mine, Healing Grenade, although it was a little bit changed, and a Group Heal, although that has been changed as well. New skills are the Distraction Device, Indomitable, Adrenaline Boost, Firefly and Tesla and many others from which we've seen the icons but not the name or gameplay of it. The distraction device throws a short range acoustic device that makes nearby target investigate its position. Indomitable protects the operative from crowd control and prevents the health from going below one bar for the next three seconds. 
Adrenaline Boost recovers a friendly target's health and stamina by 500. The Firefly is seen in another gameplay where the agent releases a miniature drone that flashes enemies, blinding them in the process. Another is the Tesla, a shock mine that stuns the target as soon as they come in contact with it. And the final one we didn't mention yet is an airwave skill. In this gameplay from the companion trailer you can see that the agent is running towards his opponents and activates some sort of airwave that knocks them down. From that same footage we can see the most noticeable feature that was lacking and promoted in later stages of the game before release. And that feature was the drone. Play as a companion drone through an app on your tablet, aid your friends in their missions by tagging enemies, applying buffs and debuffs and shooting missiles even. It seemed a little ambitious at the time but I thought what the hell, they actually managed to implement it. Later we found out they didn't. A feature that could have been a fun addition to the game had been removed. What their exact reason is for removing the drone was unsure but it probably was once again too ambitious to pull off. And as you can see here, there's also environmental destruction. Over the years I've seen a lot of content from The Division go by that didn't make it in the final version. Put it all together and it's quite the list that could have made Tom Clancy's The Division a lot more immersive than it was at release. It's about those little details. Still, I love the game in its state it's currently in. There are a lot of positive and awesome things that Massive added to the game that made it a hell of a lot more interesting. Was there any feature in this video you would have loved to see in the game? Let me know in the comments down below. If I missed any, let me know as well. That's it for this video. Enjoy your day, thank the bus driver and peace out.